Uh, the United Nations, uh, they finally moved forward, no-fly zone. And, of course, the Arab League took their action. A lot of criticism that President Barack Obama had not done enough. He should have done more. Uh, but what jumps out at me is France and Britain, they could have taken the lead. So could the Arab League have. I mean, for heaven's sakes, those Arab nations are extremely wealthy, and they have... They have planes. They have, that we, <laughs> that we saw them. them. <laughs> right. And so all of this clamor that the United States absolutely needs to do something mystified me slightly. And it was across partisan lines. John Kerry, Democrat of Massachusetts, was advocating it. John McCain, Republican of Arizona. I wasn't sure what that was about because Americans are already weary of our military adventurism abroad. We're involved in two wars, let's not forget. Uh, we're broke here at home, or so the Republicans say. Uh, furthermore, the Arab League, the Western Europe, were perfectly capable of carrying this out on their own. And on top of this, we don't want to go into another country mm -hmm. unilaterally where we just generate resentment. So mm -hmm. I thought the president did the right thing to wait. Is it important, I think, when you talk about leadership, to uh, tell other people, can you get off your butt and do something as well? <laughs> well, absolutely, right. And remember, part of the, one of the major issues in the 2008 campaign, cowboy diplomacy, smart power, right? I mean, the idea was we didn't want any more unilateral mm -hmm. action. I think the president also showed an understanding of the culture that, you know, given the dynamics of what is going on in Libya, having the United States go gangbusters in there first might actually be the worst possible outcome instead mm -hmm. of going with the U.N. and the Arab League in together. And as the president said on Friday, he's not committing ground troops. I think that was an important message for him mm -hmm. to be able to say. Wars and wars are expensive. I mean, here we are sitting here talking about tremendous deficits. Short-term costs and long-term long health care. Well, we're, look, we're, quite honestly, we'll be paying for World War II all of, for the rest of our lives. That's just the way it, 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 it happens. But I absolutely agree. Uh, we, we still have uh, ground troops in Iraq. Mm -hmm. We've still got money and investment there in war. We are heavy into Afghanistan. Remember now, 70 percent of the people think we ought to be getting out of Afghanistan. And now here you want a no, you know, no fly zone. And as Colin Powell said, the, the battle is really not in the air. I mean, you're talking about tanks. Uh, this is as much an act of war as a naval uh, barcade. I mean, we can't afford it. And you're right, Roland. You know, other people have airplanes. Other people can enforce this no-fly zone. We don't have to be the, the, the lead all the time in this. But politically, I think there's one other point here. I mean, this, this criticism of the president that he's not leading, you know, that is really a Republican talking point. Yes. Clearly, they've right. had some mm -hmm. kind of polling yes. that says yes. that's the way to attack him. They're saying that on the budget. They said that on Japan. They said that with regard to what's mm -hmm. going on in the Middle East. And again, I think what we need to realize is this is his leadership style. This is Barack Obama. This is what we voted for. This is how he won the election. This is who this man is. He leads in a different way than what we've had before. And one of the criticisms I've always had, especially of people in this town, and it drives me nuts, it's always the comparison, will he do a Reagan? Will he do a Clinton? Will he be like Carter as opposed to, no, why don't he simply be President Barack Obama? And the fact, because everybody has their own individual style. And maybe 20 years from now, folks will be saying, hey, this person is leading like President Barack Obama did. It also st stands out to me when you talk about what's happening in Libya. The critics of the president love to say, here's the guy with Pan Am 103 and they were backing terrorists. But it was under the administration of President George W. Bush when Gaddafi, when they renounced Absolutely. their nuclear plan, we said we're now going to we establish let him relations. back into the fold. Yes. It was George W. Bush who let him back into the fold. And I'm not going to say that was a bad move. The simple right. fact of the matter is, if you look around the globe, this is all extraordinarily complicated business. Despite the neocons who had a lot of power doing the George W. Bush administration, you can't 
go in and invade every country right. you don't like. <laughs> We're still paying for that, literally, in, in all kinds of cost. So the simple fact of the matter is you have to look at every country and make the best deal you can. We knew, knew Gaddafi was a tyrant, a shameless dictator, <laughs> right. supported terrorists, but at the time, that looked like the best deal we could cut. So if you want to blame anybody for Gaddafi, blame George W. Bush. And let me say one more thing about uh, Obama's leadership style. He isn't out in front of the cameras bragging about what he's doing all the time. He's not out there saying mission accomplished. Right. He's engaged in a quiet diplomacy on the phone, talking to other lead leaders of the world, trying to really get things done. You don't get the things you want done accomplished necessarily out in public all the time. A lot of this is quiet conversations behind closed doors. And that seems to fail lots of different people. And obviously, President George H.W. Bush, you, you look at Panama with Noriega, uh, you look at, of course, with Kuwait. But the reality is, George H.W. Bush, I believe, was similar to President Barack Obama in that they understood you have to bring in international partners. It cannot just be all the U.S. all the time. Well, that's particularly right. I mean, here you had John McCain saying, you know, a no-fly zone is just this easy thing we could mm -hmm. go in and do. But okay, let's say we do that. What comes next? Are we gonna, you know, we've got the rebel forces and we've got Qaddafi. We get Qaddafi out, and by the way, the rebel forces are not exactly a unified front. It's a little bit unclear who's really the leader and who's really gonna take over. So there's also gotta be a plan in place, and that's why you need your partners, and I think that's why the president made it clear we're not putting in troops, that once you get rid of Qaddafi, then what? And you have the African Union. Real I mean, quick. we haven't mentioned them, and and they're, they they can come together also. I mean, Gaddafi used to run there, and we headed the African Union for a while. They know Gaddafi. They can they can uh, be part of this too. I mean, no, we we don't have a cowboy. No, no, no thing on Texas here. But I mean, <laughs> we, we just don't have. So a some cowboy. of us Texans are a little bit different. Yeah, <laughs> a little sophisticated. <laughs>